On the surface of the sphere are electric and magnetic fields. Here is a crude animation to give you a rough feel what this would look like. I've used colors in this animation to represent fields. Magenta represents the electric field and blue represents the magnetic field. Let me show you this animation to you two more times. I'll talk about the green field in a moment. A wave like this can move in a straight line in one direction or in the right circumstances can change direction and bounce back and forth. Here's an animation to show this change in direction. The wave rebounds back and forth. Once again, You get the idea. Let me emphasize, these waves are not superimposed on top of some kind of solid el elementary particle. In a way, it is the opposite idea. Elementary particles are made up of these waves, superimposed spherical waves made up of fields. If I'm right, there's nothing smaller, nothing more fundamental, nothing below if you have ever heard of the turtle joke before. This is how it goes, all the way down to the lowest turtle. The lowest turtle is a field, not a particle. Let me emphasize, these waves are not just made from the electric and magnetic fields in two dimensions. If you've ever had an engineering class called statics, this idea is about statics. You can't make a stable three-dimensional object with just two-dimensional bracing. These waves have three fields. The first two fields are tangent to the surface of the waves. The tangent fields, the fields tangent to the surface of the wave are the electric and the magnetic fields. In one single wave, these two fields are always perpendicular to each other. Now, this may be something I'm wrong about. In my opinion, in one wave, the electric and magnetic fields are always perpendicular. I emphasize one wave to contrast this to one elementary particle, which has a different meaning. By the way, this is a very advanced detail. Ingenious physicists will argue and debate this. Genius mathematicians may struggle with it for years. At this point, I really want to digress. While making this video, I've repeatedly created and then deleted different ways of describing this in detail. You should see some of the wonderful animations I've made for this. While this is extremely interesting, it is just too advanced for this film. Anyhow, the electric and the magnetic field are perpendicular to each other. They form a plane that is tangent to the surface of the spherical wave. I represent the third field with the color green. This third field is always perpendicular to the other two and always points to the centers of the waves. What is the third field? Well, that is a matter of scientific opinion. Anyhow, when these three fields naturally interact, they make spherical waves. Before I go on, let me take a moment and emphasize an important detail. This is the heart of the grand unification of physics. I'm literally describing the exact details showing you how to unify physics. Let me emphasize another important detail. I'm describing three fields. One is the electric field, one is the magnetic field. The third field is, well, I'm building up to them. However, traditionally, these three fields are treated by physicists as being distinct, 
as if they can each exist all on their own. Often each field is thought of by itself. However, really what I'm describing is not a description of three interacting fields that are next to each other by chance. I'm describing how three fields interact as one field. This is one field, a unified field, that has three aspects to it. This is the unified field. Let me emphasize, these three well-known fields are components of one unified field, or the unified field. I have shown you these spherical waves with fields. Now, let me show them to you as vectors. Visualized, showing all three fields from the side as vectors, a spherical wave would look like this. Once again, slower and slower Ponder this detail. A photon can travel clear across the universe without falling apart or dissipating. That is pretty remarkable. Photons are perfectly self-sustaining. In my opinion, that is beautiful. These three fundamental fields interact with each other. In a way, the three fields cannot be separated because they are really just three aspects of the same unified field. Thus, the three fields stay together. They don't dissipate. That helps to make photons perfect. This way of describing photons makes sense. You can easily visualize photons as both a wave and as a particle or as a packet of energy. In my opinion, all prior models for the photon made no sense. At best, they were incomplete. Spherical waves are everywhere. If I am right, then every elementary particle of matter that you are looking at, everything that you see, is made up of these spherical waves. Again, this grand unification theory is, at its heart, a particle model. If I am right, every photon of light you see is a spherical wave. These waves have three fields acting at right angles to each other. There is an electric field, there is a magnetic field, the third field, if I am correct, is the gravitational field. The third field is gravity. Let me go back to this graphic and label the field. In this animation, I used fields. I made the gravitational field green and place it on the inside because its corresponding vector points to the inside. In this animation, I used vectors. The green vector represents the gravitational field and always points to the center of the wave. Please notice this detail. Notice how each field is pivoting around the other two in perfect symmetry. It's not like there is some electric field just floating around on its own. It is not like there is some magnetic field just floating around on its own. It is not like there is some gravitational field just floating around on its own. You never see a purely magnetic photon. You never see a purely electric photon. You never see a purely gravitational photon. Each of these three fundamental fields is simply part of the same unified field. The symmetries are quite beautiful. Here's a graphic that shows this three-dimensional relationship. There you have it. This is the grand unification of physics. If I am correct, we are now standing at the very center of the physics labyrinth. Let's take a moment and look at this graphic. I have the label grand unification at the top because I believe this is the grand unification of physics. On the left side there is an equation. On the right side there are three vectors at right angles to each other. Now that is a three-dimensional form of the equation on the left. So looking at the equation on the left we see 
the letter E in magenta. And then it's followed by an X. That stands for the cross product. Followed by the letter B. That stands for the magnetic field. So electric cross magnetic. And this is equal. And then there's a large capital G in green. That stands for the gravitational field vector. So each of the letters has an arrow over it. The arrow signifies that it is a vector. Okay, so on the right you see the vectors. There's the electric vector, the magnetic vector, and the gravitational field vector. And again, there's a cross product happening, and it's represented by the curved red arrow. And I have the right hand rule there because in this graphic we're using the right hand rule. I'll explain that in a minute. Anyhow, this is my favorite form of the grand unification equation. It is very easy to visualize. This is a three-dimensional equation. Each vector falls along one of the x, y, and z axes of space. I do not think it is a coincidence that there is one fundamental force for each dimension of space. Personally, in my opinion, space is three-dimensional because there are three fundamental forces that act at right angles to each other.